Among the many things we heard from Donald Trump during the debate with Kamala Harris was a baseless lie about Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio. These are the people that she and Biden led into our country. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. No, it is not. That right there was former President Donald Trump spreading a conspiracy theory that he learned from social media in front of tens of millions of Americans. The truth matters on this show, and I want to make this absolutely clear. None of what you just heard from the former president is remotely true. For more on this, I want to bring in an actual expert on this subject, Clark County Commission President Melanie Wilt. Um, thank you so, so much for being here, Commissioner. The governor of your state, Mike DeWine, has said this is not true. Can you please tell us, in, the, in your official capacity, have you seen even any evidence of these claims, pets being stolen, killed, and eaten? Absolutely none. I have spoken with our Springfield PD and our sheriff's office. We have had um, concerned calls come into our dispatch center, and they've been followed up on and have not been uh, substantiated. What was your reaction last night? You, like millions of other Americans, are watching the debate. What was your reaction when you heard Donald Trump talk about Springfield and spread this lie? We do have very real issues in Springfield, Ohio, and immigration is a very real issue. So I'm glad that our federal uh, potential president uh, is talking about it and bringing light to it. Uh, but the issues in Springfield that are really related to a big surge of Haitian refugees coming to our community, most of them are actually here legally. Um, local leaders in our community are really focused on the issues that matter, which are ensuring that people are driving um, with proper licenses. Secondly, funding to help alleviate the pressure that we're feeling from the infrastructure um, when we have 20,000 more people working in the same infrastructure, it just doesn't work anymore. And finally, we want to work on cultural assimilation and helping people to um, overcome some of these cultural gaps and barriers that we're seeing between our traditional Springfield and Clark County residents and those who are new to our community. Why do you have this large group of, of immigrants, mostly from Haiti? It's my understanding that they came here several years ago for jobs and inexpensive housing. We have a very low cost of living in comparison to the rest of the United States here. They came here for jobs and were brought by temp agencies that had opportunities to place them in positions here uh, because we did have available jobs. One Haitian community leader in Springfield spoke to my colleague, Yamiche Alcindor. I want to share what he said about how these lies have impacted his community. They are scared for their lives. Uh, some of them are asking me, uh, even yesterday I got a friend calling me asking me if he has to leave because he, he's scared for, for his life. Um, so another friend told me that um, it seems that uh, he would have had, he would have had some family coming to visit him, but it seems that he he gonna welcome them in, in Columbus or Dayton because he is not it is not safe right now for him in Springfield. These are hardworking immigrants who are here legally, um, doing jobs, being part of the community. What is your reaction to what he just said? There are real concerns uh, for those who live here and for uh, Haitian immigrants who have come here as well. Um, one thing that I don't have concerns about is safety. Um, Haitian immigrants are not a law enforcement problem in our community. Uh, they're much more likely to be victims of crimes than be, to the, be the perpetrators of those crimes. Um, so I do have concerns mostly about what this is doing to the image of our community. I do have concerns about what it will do potentially to uh, business investment and others who might come here to visit, uh, because we have a lot of great things in this community that we want people to come here for. Um, President Trump has been to our 
our community before, and I know he is aware of that. And Senator Vance has been good to uh, Ohio and uh, to Springfield, and we want to encourage them to come and kind of see all of us for themselves. Can I just ask before we go, if you didn't have all those migrants there filling all those jobs, what would it do to the economy in Springfield if none of them ever came or if they were subject to a mass deportation? Well, because these are refugees, um, the deportation conversation is somewhat moot because they're here on a temporary um, refugee status. So um, they're not here on an illegal status. And so I don't know why there would be any kind of mass deportation. Um, but as far as our economy is concerned, we did have available jobs. We did need workers. And so that was a match at the time that people were brought here to fill those temporary jobs. Unfortunately, we have been saturated and our infrastructure is definitely uh, at max capacity. And we're looking for ways that we can deal with that at this time. So we are looking for additional federal funding. Um, the state has been generous with funding for health care and for driver's training. Those are the really important things that we want to stay focused on.